Okay. okay, I think I'm gonna start. Are you and, gonna let Brando say anything or are you gonna go? Yeah, so this is how it's gonna work for now, uh, is I'm gonna start in a kind of warm up -y way uh, after I say a few words. And then after I've done that, Brando's gonna talk uh, for Earth Dance and then I'll, I'll begin the class in a more sort of, uh, I'll get into the material. So I encourage you, uh, if you're standing or sitting or lying down, is to just uh, close your eyes for a moment and uh, just arrive into sensation. Sensing your contact with the earth, your breath. Your sense of energy and movement in your body. And begin the process of taking the slack out of your body in various ways. As if your body is like a big sweater and you're just gently pulling on those threads. And remembering that you have a body. <laughs> If you're having trouble hearing, just send us a chat or wave your hand. Okay, so while you're doing that, I want to say a couple of things. So uh, keep just arriving into your body, working with small stretches and sensing yourself. Um, I guess I just want to say this is my first online class I've ever taught, and I'm a bit terrified <laughs> so i hope i don't mess it up um, <laughs> i just want to thank the crew of people that are helping to make this possible uh, from earth dance and uh, um, thank you thank you thank you and i just want to acknowledge what a, a incredible time we're living in and to send my love to all of you and to all of uh, the people who are um, struggling to pay the rent, get food, and stay healthy, uh, and stay alive. Um, yeah, this is a brave new world. And um, uh, I, like all of us, uh, have days uh, where I'm, I feel okay, and then days where I just crash. <laughs> and uh, the last couple of days were the crash days, uh, but, Prior to that, I had a few good days. So um, I'm incredibly grateful for this community of people uh, and my family and my friends. And um, yeah, so thank you all. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go back into. Do you want uh, Brando to talk? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna move a little bit more, okay? And then uh, Brando can talk. So uh, why don't we all just, uh, if you can stand. Stand and if you want to sit, you can sit. And let's just uh, stand in parallel or sit with your uh, legs in parallel. And let's just do uh, some slow roll downs, uh, dropping the chin to the chest and just slowly diving towards the earth. Uh, and uh, since you're all muted, sounds are okay. Uh, <laughs> I always say in my class that sounds are okay, but now you really have permission. And now drop your tail, let your heels come up off the floor with your hands on the floor, your fingertips. And so you're in a little ball and just rock back and forth uh, towards your tail and towards your hands.
and feel free to modify this. And now lift your tail towards the sky and let's just do a gentle roll up. Okay, which screen are we working on? This one. Okay. Back um, up, back up. All right, so now let's just spread our feet a little bit. And uh, let's just imagine that we're like seaweed and we're just undulating from our ribs and then our upper spine. Okay. I'm backing up so you can see. I want to thank Angie. She's in the room uh, helping. Angie Hauser, thank you very much. And uh, find it, you can go faster or slower. Bigger or smaller. And now initiate with the top of the head. And now come back to standing. And let's all just close our eyes, or either sitting or standing, and just uh, feel yourself. Release any muscles around your rib cage that are inhibiting your breathing. Just soften your insides. Okay, so let's just start rubbing the surface of our body to awaken the skin. Okay, and let's um, do the same thing with our face. So let's just soften the muscles and the tissue of our faces. Ah, it's good to make a sound here. Ah. And you can pull your scalp if you like. If you have hair, if you don't have hair, just rub. Maybe pull the ears. Stick out your tongue. Ah. And then scrunch your face up. Ah. Okay, and then just shake it out. Okay, so I think uh, we're ready for Brando's uh, introduction. If that's okay with you. Does that seem right, Brando? Yeah. Um, thumbs up if you can hear me. Oh, gosh. Um, I, I feel very similarly to Chris. I feel nervous. This is kind of my first time uh, hosting something of this magnitude uh, online. So bear with me. Um, and yeah, first... Uh, my deep gratitude to my friend Chris uh, for jumping into the deep end <laughs> pretty pretty damn quickly uh, and 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 really really pitching in and and we're all sort of walking into the unknown and it feels really uh, affirming for me to have a a friend and a mentor and a teacher to be leading the way and being so transparent. Um, about uh, about where you're at in it. So thank you for being here, Chris. Thank you for taking this step um, with all of us and 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 representing Earth Dance in this way. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. And uh, yeah, and like Chris said, that we we do have um, we got this together pretty quickly. 
and we would not have been able to do this without the incredible uh, guidance and um, of, a, of a team that has been supporting this idea and supporting the, the, the technical aspects of it and really just supporting Earth Dance. So I just want to shout out to um, Anna Maynard, uh, who has been um, in her own way, uh, really launching some pretty amazing um, and revolutionary work on in the virtual dance world. Uh, she has a she has a um, uh, a movement called Free School that's offering multiple dance classes every day. She'll be posting different um, information about that on the chat. Um, I want to thank Jared Williams, who's representing himself and Lion's Jaw, um, who really like kind of inspired inspired this idea for me. Like by by right right off the bat, getting Michelle Boulet online and and sort of talking wisdom to all of us so thanks jared for continuing to be on the leading edge um, with us all i want to thank um uh sarah monette uh, i don't i don't see her on the screen right now but so, oh there she is um she's she's kind of our technical director and also um bringing a wealth of experience already into this sort of format and and another huge support and huge help to me and to Earth Dance. And then uh, the Earth Dance staff, which is like still holding it down. Like we see like we're, we have all these backdrops, but there are people that are actually there. Wave, wave, your, wave your hands. I see Franny and Sam in the background. Thank you so much for continuing to hold it down during this time. So important. Uh, also, Jax, our operations director. I don't see where she is. There she is. And, and of course, um, Lindsay Swan, who's been like right along, like right on pace with getting this together, uh, would not have happened without Lindsay. And of course, my gosh, in this um, time of both like a global crisis and like what's there's all the shifts that are happening at Earth Dance, Spirit Joseph, who has stepped in as the interim director and is really doing a fantastic job supporting us all. Um, and then I just want to thank all of you, all of you for, for coming and for showing up and for continuing to create community and like what Chris said in a really odd and scary and interesting, interesting time that we're all kind of experiencing together and individually in our own ways. So thank you all for being here. Um, this, is, this is meant as a hub for us to see each other and to know that we're still all okay it's also a, a, a moment for us to be in our bodies together. And, and it is a moment to, to, to raise awareness around Earth Dance, which is an organization that has been hit pretty hard by this. As you know, like um, you couldn't do anything worse than contact improvisation right now in the <laughs> world. Like it's probably the poster child for what not to do during this situation. So, um, we're 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 working we're working so hard at trying to stay relevant and stay alive during this time and your support um like i said this is a hub for all of us to get together and if you do have the means uh please donate anything uh to the cause to keep earth dance afloat during this time um your generous donations will really help our efforts of continuing to provide programming and to provide really a space and a home for us all to like come and know that it exists. Um, it is such a treat to see so many faces that I recognize and so many people from around the country um, and, that are showing up right now. And, and in Canada too, I see Tanya in the corner and it just makes my heart sing. So um, I think there's tons of like, technical information that's coming through the chat. Thanks to Sarah and our crew. Um, you're in good hands with Chris. The class will end at around eight o'clock and then we'll kind of move to more of a like earth dance style in the kitchen potluck um, and a talk back with Chris and a chance for all of us to sort of have our voices be heard and to, to see and to, 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 to just be with each other in that other way that we like to be with each other through earth dance. Um, I think that's it for me now, Chris. Thanks a lot. Take it away. Oh, by the way, I, since I'm sort of like 
also technically watching over the space. I may not be moving as much as everybody else. It pains my heart right now, but uh, I feel really, re really full by like just watching everybody and knowing that I'm helping to hold the space. Thanks so much, Brando. Uh, you've been just uh, a lifer for Earth Dance. Uh, you have uh, gone to the mat so many times for this organization, so yay. All right, well, let's begin. So I have a, a, a little task for each of you, uh, if you're willing, and that is I would like you to get uh, four objects, and they should be not huge. Uh, you know, I would say no bigger than this. Um, so if you can go in your room or your house and just collect four objects, and I'll wait for you. <laughs> You want to get yours, sir? I got them right here. I know, but aren't you going to be done there? Oh, yeah. Okay. Can you make me big so I can... You don't want to see. Oh, that's all right. I, as long as they can see me. Yeah, they can see you. Okay. They have you pinned or well you can stay there and then okay. or when you stop but give them another minute or so uh, so let's see Okay. All right, you can start. Okay. I'm going to assume that uh, you either have your objects or you're almost ready. So um, I'm going to show you my three objects just, just so you get a sense of uh, I have a piece of wood, I have a little uh, red teacup, I have a rock from Taiwan, and uh, I have a little dog. Um, so I would like you to pick one of your objects and to designate it as your um, worry object. And the idea is that this object is going to be a container for your worries for this uh, time that we're together. And um, so this little doggy is, um, it's my cat Coco's dog. And uh, so she lent it to me for this class. And uh, I'm going to put my worries in this dog, and I'm going to put the dog somewhere and tell uh, my object that I will come back to you. Uh, and but for now, I'm going to put you uh, over here so that I can uh, have uh, an experience uh, without having to hold my worries. Okay, mm -hmm. so pick one object that is your worry object and put it someplace off to the side so that it can uh, hold your uh, concerns. And I can't guarantee that my cat won't come take my object, but we'll see. Okay, so I'll wait. So I want to I want to tell you that uh, I got this concept years and years ago by my dear friend Stephen Steisel, who was my performance coach when I was about 22. So that was in 1982 uh, or 83, so long time. Um, at that point, it was my judge. And uh, he was, I put my judge on the table and said, okay, you can take a break. I'm gonna dance for a while. But for now, it's my worry object. Okay, so you have three objects. Um, so what I would like you to do is put, uh, make a V with your legs or if you're sitting at a table, you can just clear the table. And then you take one object and you put it in the space either between your legs or on the table. Then you take another one and you place it somewhere near the object. And then you take the third object and you place it and you observe. And when you feel that it's time, you just move one of the objects and notice what happens. 
So you just make a series of adjustments, seeking for those arrangements that uh, feel resonant. And uh, you can be as creative as you want. And uh, I encourage you to uh, take a moment to observe before you make the next change. So just, just take some time to do that. Sometimes you may find an arrangement and you think, it's perfect. Don't worry, there'll be other perfect ones. Don't get attached. And sometimes you'll do something and you're like, oh my God, that's horrible. Okay, so let's uh, find one last one that you like and just uh, let it be. And now I'd like you to uh, pick one object and uh, put the other two aside. And what I would like you to do is to um, reach for your object to touch it. And you can touch it with your, any part of your body. Okay, and let's just pause for a second. So now, rather than reaching for the object, I would like you to imagine that it is drawing you towards it. And then move away. And just notice the difference between, uh, maybe you could try going back to the original way, which is reaching out to touch it, and then going back to feeling the object drawing you.
Okay. Now, just for some fun thing, we're going to start moving. Uh, maybe put it in the center of the room or somewhere in the room where there's some space around it. And I'd like you to start improvising in the space that is uh, around your object. And if, like me, you're warming up, make the movements uh, such that it feels right for your body. And move the object somewhere else in the room just to feel how the room changes to this new orientation. Okay, so you can put your object somewhere safe, out of the way, and uh, come back to uh, wherever you want to be. If you're sitting, that's fine. If you're standing or lying down, any, any orientation is fine. Um, what I'd like to do is something that I, if you've taken my class, you've done this with me before, is the idea of uh, from the so I call it the ambient flux of sensation inside my body. I allow gestures to emerge from my inner sensorium. When I say gesture, I just mean I start to move and something starts to feel significant or uh, it becomes a thing for me. It's not significant in like any heavy handed way, just, oh, I, I feel this sensation and my body wants to move in this way. Okay, let's just pause for one second. I just want to check, how's everybody doing? Uh, can you hear me? Are you, uh, give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. And if you have any concerns or questions, you can just chat uh, to Brando and he'll send it to me or Angie will let me know, okay? All right, so the next thing I'd like you to do is I'd like you to, all right, so let's say uh, I feel a sensation in this part of my body and I feel Oh, I want to move in this way. So if I feel that sense of like, uh, um, I want to go somewhere based on that sensation, I want to, in the, as it's emerging, I want to change it, okay? I don't have to say no to it. I just want to change it in some way. So if, if, if this was the place that I felt that I wanted to 
move from, I might uh, take it somewhere else. So you feel the, your sensation draws you to move in a certain way. And as that starts to uh, occur, you morph it into something else. Rather than just doing what seems inevitable based on that sensation, you, you morph it. Okay, so I'm going to pause for one second to just give you a different set of words, but it's the same idea. Um, so if uh, in my emergent gesture from the sensation has a sense of trajectory, I think of that as being determined and I want to undetermine it. So if I feel like I want to move my elbow in this way, uh, as, I, as I see that, I just allow it to become undetermined and see what happens. So continue. And rather than being absolute about it, just uh, ask yourself, how determined am I? And can I experiment with that? Can you send me? Uh, sure. You won't need to talk. So I'm going to play a little music, and you can keep going. And oh, one last thing I'm going to add to that is just that rather than just flowing from one thing to the next, you can uh, punctuate things by with stillnesses sometimes. Mm -hmm. All right, go ahead.
begin to end. End. Okay. So hopefully you're getting warmed up. <laughs> um, I'm thinking which of the things I want to do. All right, so let's do this. Um, now, rather than focusing on your inner sensorium, I'd like you to focus on what is around you, either sonically or visually. And I would like you to, your gestures to be in dialogue with your surroundings. And one of my sort of favorite concepts that helps me uh, when I'm in a room or in a studio is to imagine that the room is, has presence, it's animate. It's not an inert object, uh, but it has presence. And so uh, by feeling that, I, I become receptive to its uh, ability to influence me. Okay, so since we're all cooped up inside, this is a good time to practice this, okay? So um, just as with the objects, you, sometimes you, you reach towards something, sometimes you feel pulled towards it, uh, you can use that. You can also feel, just as when you're dancing with that person, sometimes you feel repelled. You wanna move away from something you see, okay? So let's begin. Do it sound? Yes. Uh, how about
Okay, let's begin to end. And now, because so many of you are haptic junkies like me, I would like you to get on the floor if you can. If you can't, that's all right. But I would like you to uh, work with rolling and sliding yourself across the floor. Looking for moments of stillness so that it's not just a stream of movement, but there's a sense of sometimes feeling the resonance of an image. I recognize that everyone has different spaces, so use your space to uh, generate touch. My warrior object wants to get involved, but I'm sending him off to the side. Okay, so slowly begin the ascent off the floor, if that's where you are, and begin a, a last kind of exercise where we're just working with a sense of movement and flow in the space that we have, and use your skills of navigating to be safe and to experiment with the possibilities of your space uh, and with the idea of continual movement. So when I was young, I used to spend at least 30 minutes at a time moving nonstop. We're not gonna do that, but, but that's the idea. It's just keep going. Try. 
and so just let your movement quiet down either to standing, sitting, or lying down. And just close your eyes and notice the sensations of your body and what you can perceive from where you are, inside and outside. What is perceivable? Okay. My coach here is telling me to back up. <laughs> All right. So I think we'll, we'll be done with the movement part of this uh, class. And I just want to say a few words. Um, first, uh, I, want you, I want to invite you to give your worry object uh, a chance to hold your worries for the rest of the night if they want to. Uh, but if you want to take it back, you can. It's your choice. Um, second, I want to say that uh, the act of perceiving creates the opportunity to learn. Rather than needing to know where to look, Explore your surroundings. Reperceive where you are as if it was unknown. And allow what you're perceiving to tune you, to teach you. As my uh, intellectual mentor, J.J. Gibson, talks about that you don't have to create meaning, discover it. And you can discover it in your house, outside, between you and another person, but it, it can come directly through perceiving. <clears throat> so I want to thank you all for participating in my first online class. And um, I feel immense gratitude for all these beautiful faces that I'm seeing and these people, uh, some of whom I haven't seen in a long, long time uh, from different parts of the country and world. Um, I just want to say we're all in this together. And nothing has made this more clear than what has been happening. And um, if you have extra money, uh, Earth Dance is in dire need. Uh, their source of income is non-existent when there's nobody visiting uh, Earth Dance. So uh, if we can all pitch in just a little bit, um, will help sustain the organization uh, so that it can be reborn when uh, all of this uh, starts to go back to the new normal, whatever that means. So uh, thanks again to Brando and the Earth Dance staff for all of your work to make this possible. And um, we're going to shift into um, the potluck mode and um, I just want to say namaste. Thank you. Mm, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Chris, so much. Um, this part is going to be uh, kind of fun and interesting and a little bumpy, maybe. Um, I, I think that like if you have some food, like just like you got a few objects from around the house, feel free to take a moment, um, go to the kitchen, grab a snack, uh, bring it to uh, our virtual Earth Dance kitchen. <laughs> And, and we'll have like a, a, a talk back um, a little bit so we can um, both share like our experiences of the class 
And also, um, if, if people have um, any questions for Chris, um, I think we can try to just, um, just take yourself off mute and speak. And if it gets, if it gets too much, I'll, I'll sort of moderate it in a different way. But I think um, we can figure this out. Um, so um, feel free to get food. And in the meantime, if anybody has anything to say, uh, kind of like, let's just watch out for each other and, 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 um, and see how this part goes. Hey. Hi, Erin. Hi. Thank you, Chris. That was extraordinary. That was, thank you. Um, I have a, I'm, sometimes it's awkward to ask that first question. So I'm going to ask you something that's not like, that's more a point. What did you, can you repeat what you said? The act of perceiving can open up something, something, and it was so inspiring. I'm like, oh, I gotta remember that. It, and I've. The act of perceiving can teach you. Um, rather than uh, spending all of your time waiting for your teacher to say the right word, to teach you how to perceive, yeah. engage in perceiving to learn. Um, hello. Hi. Hello, I'm Manon. Um, I, hello. Um, I just want to say that I have a painting in my house for, I don't know how long it has been there, but I never touched it. I touched it to, you know, put it somewhere else, but I never touched the painting. And it's a beautiful nude. So it was wonderful to just touch it. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Chris. Hi. I just wanted to say that um, I also felt like this was such an icebreaker for me to move in my home space. I'm not used to moving. Um, I've created a, a, cleared out some space in the attic. <laughs> and um, I discovered I can support the top of my head on the eave here as the <laughs> ceiling slopes and I, I just felt the whole um, experience um, made me connect to this space and made me feel like I could dance in this space. So thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I will just respond by saying that um, uh, I live with the Space Master and that's Angie Hauser. Uh, and by that I mean uh, we have a regular practice of uh, moving things around in our house uh, and uh, so this is I'm in grandmother's room uh, so when she comes to stay with us this is her bedroom but obviously there's nothing in here now because we we took it all out uh, because she's down in North Carolina um, but I encourage you to reorganize your rooms uh, it's amazing I mean I don't know if you when you were a child but uh, that first night after you had rearranged your bedroom when you went to bed it was so exciting and you couldn't wait to wake up to see the new room. So uh, just as with the objects we were playing with, uh, you can do it with your whole room. <laughs> hey, Chris, it's Alicia. Hi, Alicia. Hey, Alicia. Good to see you. Thank you so much. I feel like um, I didn't need to rearrange my house because I, I felt like you, what you led me in was rearranging my perception. So I felt like it was a totally new space for me. Thank yeah. you so much. You're welcome. Mm. One of the, the first objects that I saw was my phone. <laughs> And yeah, wow, there's, there's quite a relationship there, <laughs> like very intimate relationship. And, and uh, yeah, I felt the, the love hate relationship in that, the, the tension there with it was really interesting. Um, yeah, I, I really got so much from, yeah, that, that uh, the difference between reaching for and, 
just just relating to and and feeling that attraction um yeah thank you so much yeah welcome Hey, this is Rachel in Vermont, and um, I haven't done contact improv in many years. <laughs> it's a very funny way to get reintroduced. Um, I'm really grateful, and uh, there's a lot of things I could reflect on, but I think what I want to say is um, thank you for the worry object. Sorry, my clock is going. Um, I, one of the things I picked up was a dustpan and broom. <laughs> And it just seemed like the, the perfect thing. There was such amazing, I don't know if it was synchronicity or just the, the symbolism of sweeping things up. And, and at the end, um, I picked it back up and I opened up my wood stove and I swept all my unnecessary worries into the fire. Right. <laughs> I'll never look at my dustpan the same again. Yeah, I'm Nez. I really enjoyed also the object play. And it reminded me of um, doing sand tray therapy work with children. And um, I picked up this that was used to be my mom's and, and the most satisfying moment when was when I put it in the slipper. <laughs> and it just looked so comfy and sweet. And I just was like, wanted to move all around this is the center of the universe now this Yay. sweet little slipper <laughs> thank mm -hmm. you hi there my name is christier and i'm in portland oregon and um thank you so much for that class i finally turned my video back on because um i wanted to share that i I did the whole class in water and it was amazing. Mm -hmm. I often do, I have a hot tub and I was, I often do movement in there, but to have the, the guided uh, improv part um, was really awesome in the hot tub. So now my video's back on because I'm out of the hot tub. But thank you so much. <laughs> wow. <laughs> my hot tub is broken, so um, oh. it's been broken for months. So. I'm vicariously living through you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Priscilla from Newton, and um, thank you for this experience. It brought me back to my roots, <laughs> you know, kind of way, way back. And I've been immersed uh, in the last few weeks. I teach for Lesley University in their creative arts and learning program, and so um, I'm turning my movement course that I was supposed to fly to in Seattle <laughs> into an online class in creative movement, kinesthetic learning in the classroom. <laughs> so it's been just a whole process of, um, you know, being online and going to webinars and collaborating with colleagues and really exploring how to kind of mine this territory in a really deep way. And um, one thing I really appreciated, oh, your whole progression was very beautiful. Um, but I'm in a room where I have lots of photographs that I've, you know, created in the past. And I have lots of pictures of family mm. and just objects. And it was like, again, kind of dropping down into history, you know? Uh, so it was really kind of filled me up with the you know, power of that sensation. And also that in these times, um, we can do the unimaginable because we carry who we are into whatever experience it is. And when you're deeply immersed and committed, that you will find a path to follow. Um, so, you know, with the object, <laughs> mm -hmm. holding on to it, reaching toward it, I mean, the metaphor of all of that is uh, a life metaphor. So thank you.
Hey, it's um, Jared here in Boston. Jared. Um, I wanted to say thank you, Chris. And also just, I've been um, involved in watching so many movement teachers figure out this process over the past week and a half of how to turn this, you know, usually um, body to body experience into this experience and what's lost and what can be sort of saved or even cultivated. And I think a lot of it seems to have to do with that feeling of um, holding space seems to be like really the, the essence of it. Um, it's almost like a reduction of one's teaching, like not a reduced teaching, but like a reduction sauce of the teaching. <laughs> because you can't really see the nuances of the movement on the screen of the other people. Mm -hmm. um, and also it's limited often in, by time because an hour seems to be close to the max that either the formats can handle or people can handle being online. So I felt, felt like you handled both of those beautifully and I was really shocked that it was your first time to the races. <laughs> um, so thank you. I've been so for scared that. to take the class as I was this one. <laughs> My daughter said, Dad, what's wrong with you? <laughs> she said, you've been teaching for years. I'm like, uh, well, thanks for being my guinea pigs. I wanted to say hello and um, that I was so sad when I found out that you and Angie would not be teaching at Sky Camp because um, I'd signed up and was looking forward to seeing you there. Um, and even though this is hardly actual reality, I still appreciate the connection of virtual reality. So thanks for this class today. Thank you so much. Uh, we wanted to be there. Absolutely. We want to be there. <laughs> well, hopefully something will happen soon that's similar and we can catch up then. Yes. In the meantime, I hope you're well. Yeah, I, before, I just want to also say um, thank you, Chris. I'm not ending it, but it, you, Corey, you made me think of something that this is our first Earth Dance Live, and, and we're, we're working um, pretty fast and furiously to line up, you know, teachers that we all know and love and appreciate as both, like, people who will gather us together as the hub that we know Earth Dance to be, but also that have wisdom to share through this through this format, so um, on 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 the docket, or I think we're 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 speaking with KJ Holmes to teach um, next week or the week after. Paul Singh, Bradley Ellis, and and uh, I've I've been talking to Alicia. So um, we'll keep on doing this week after week as long as it makes sense, as long as long as it's still relevant. And um, it's it's the first of many, and it's just so sweet to have us all gather together in this way. Yeah, I just want to share a practice that I've been doing uh, since this all began is uh, I, I try to find uh, one or two people that I have not heard from and I write them a letter and um, check in and um, invariably they're so grateful and uh, it reopens a channel that maybe has been silent for a while. Um, you know, I, I feel like uh, there's never been a time uh, more than now to tell the people you love that you love them. And uh, that's what I've been doing. And um, if I haven't gotten to you yet, uh, I'm, I'm, I can only handle one or two a day. Uh, it's, it's a lot. Uh, rather, I, I, rather than just chatting quickly, uh, I mean, that's okay too, but I try to at least uh, take some time to do one or two a day. So. I encourage you to try that. I, just I to would hop love. On. I don't know how many. Oh, okay. Can I steal it, Jared? I just wanted to mention. Oh yeah, take it. Um, I just wanted to say hey to everybody. I see a lot of really amazing faces in here. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> Um, I have been working in collaboration with uh, two other people, Emma and Sophia, to get together 
a series of online classes. So if you're missing dance and want to be in community and want to be with other people who are also movement based people and go check out free school. It's on Instagram right now and we're going to find a way to quickly switch it over to a website if you don't have Instagram. But if you don't have Instagram, download it and then go look at free school. F-R-E-S-K-E-W-L. And we have teachers from all over the world, like several classes a day, leading classes on Zoom. And it's all in efforts to um, get people moving in their spaces, get people together in their hearts and bodies and um, to get some money into the pockets of the many, many, many teaching artists who lost their jobs um, and to stay together in, in practice. Um, so I, I hope to see some of your faces there. I just wanted to say that. And thank you, Chris. That was a beautiful class. It's good to, it's good to take with you again. Anna, thank you so much for that work you're doing. It's really amazing, amazing work. And it's touching hundreds, maybe thousands. Uh, yeah. So. And so far, we've, we, you know, the money goes directly to the teacher's pocket. So far, we've raised quite a bit of money for these teachers. And it's very exciting, you know, to see people not be overdrafted in their bank accounts because they got to teach an online class. And that's like really celebratory. I think so. Thank you, Chris. You're welcome. Thanks, Brando, for doing this. I don't know if this is appropriate, but uh, through chat, if anyone is really struggling and needs help, maybe send a chat and uh, we can, uh, we'll reach out to you. Hi, it's Sue. Hi. Thanks, Chris. And Brando and everybody who's who's here. That it was an amazing group. Um, I am sitting with the question about um, what makes improv contact improv, and is it even possible through a screen, or is that more of a personal experience nowadays? Just a question to put out there. Well, I think that question, yeah, Paul, go for it. Did you want to answer that, Paul? Yeah, I have an answer. Go for it. Um, I've been to some of the, uh, the boogie type dances uh, that have been happening with DJs in the, in the Boston area, although the participants have not been limited to Boston area. And uh, if you pin another person and they pin you, you can create this visual contact with them and respond to them, their movements visually and respond to their movements with your movements. And it is a, a, a sort of a connection. It's not contact improv, but at least uh, there's a, a direct responding to each other, which I feel is very important and uh, I've appreciated. I was just about to say that um, this question of um, can you do contact without touching has, you know, it's a question people have asked for years and um, <clears throat> I, I guess I don't really need to answer it. Uh, just that um, I think one of the things that is so amazing about contact is that it awakened in almost everyone that I know who does this form an appreciation for the value of touch. <clears throat> but also the, the, an appreciation for how perception is the foundation of your life. Uh, and that how, um, for me, when I started contact, <clears throat> I was not aware uh, that I was so visually uh, oriented. Uh, and when uh, I realized how much information I could get through touch, not just in specific touch situations, but in my life, um, I started to reorganize how I uh, explored and, and discovered the world. Um, and what that did would, was made me aware that I can change 
the perceptual frame uh, that I live within or uh, that I um, experience myself in the world. And I'm not frozen in one way of doing that. And so if I, if touch is something that um, uh, with another person is not something I can uh, engage in at this time, uh, I can, um, I can connect with vision and sound and smell and um, my whole being um, and use the, uh, my contact with the earth and with the objects that I, I surround as a way of like uh, keeping my sense of touch alive, but um, uh, place holding for that day when you, uh, I get to dance with you all again. <laughs> Hi, Chris, it's Maddie. Hi, oh, hi. <laughs> uh, I just wanna say thank you so much for this class. I've been trying to, you know, see how I can choreograph without even being in a studio. And, you know, with kind of uh, experimenting with the space I have in my kitchen, I realized that I had a lot of space to, um, you know, actually move in. So I thank you for that. Um, I guess my question would be, um, if you do not have like a significant amount of space in order to move in, how can you still practice dance or how can you still practice the form of contact improv? Well, um, I, my, uh, now you're getting a window into my personal life. Uh, my dish <laughs> has been broken. Sorry, I didn't mean to. <laughs> but, but my dishwasher has been broken for what? almost a year, <laughs> so I've been watching videos <laughs> constantly, uh, and now even more because we're at home all the time. And so, and so you get into this mode of being on automatic, like you wash and you put them here and you put them away. And, and so all of that is now a, a landscape for improvisation with me. And uh, um, I can touch things in ways that, uh, that are purely efficient, which is what I usually do. And then I just sort of stop and say, I got all the time in the world now. I have no place to go. <laughs> <laughs> I to rush through the dishes and I can experiment. And, uh, and so like one thing I like to do is like I try to do the dishes and make no sound. Well, of course that's impossible, but it changes the whole quality of movement. Um, mm -hmm. When I walk through the house, uh, I experiment with uh, speed and uh, levity and weightedness and um yeah so uh that's what i do <laughs> awesome well again thank you so much um yeah uh, when i had those objects i had basically um a picture of my fiance and i my sketchbook and uh a, a baseball that we caught um in one of the games that we went to but you know it just it, it kind of like reminded me just shifting them all together how it every one of them is kind of the same in some way because it all uh you know kind of reminds me of what we have in life is very valuable and you know we just can't wait to you know spend time with the ones that we love and we can't wait to go to public events again and you know, just be in collaboration with others. And, you know, I've been taking every opportunity to collaborate with many artists. So I appreciate that, um, that exercise. Thank you. You're welcome. I just wanted to say that um, I've been really sitting with, I've been working with my colleagues in Brooklyn, we work with teenagers and um, have been working on how to um, continue our connective work with teenagers. And I see this as such an opportunity, like a possibility of really growing our, our connective muscles in the way that you were talking, Chris. And I've been thinking about like, how can we make dances with our fingers connecting through a screen? And I just think there's such a possibility and a, a real aliveness and creativity that can come from this time around us, like expanding what we think is possible for connection that I see can really enhance our um, connecting when we're able to touch again. And I just wanted to like send out that like excitement and possibility to you all. Thank you. And then I'm also like really thinking about this and so excited for any like 
collaborative thinking that anyone wants to do. I'm really, I have lots of great collaborators and I feel like this is a really rich time for the dance community. Hey Chris, thank you so much. Oh, so lovely to see you, Steve. So it long. So, it's, it's been such a long time. So lovely to hear your voice and your wonderful guidance. And it was so interesting to be in this space and moving and, and with my lovely wife right near me, <laughs> but actually not wanting to be in contact with her, to be in solidarity <laughs> with the, so many people who cannot the same be in contact. I really, uh, really felt that sense of like, we can be alone in our solidarity with all, so many people in the world mm -hmm. who, are, who are really having to deal with uh, being really, really alone. And so it's just a way I wanted to kind of drop into that space also. Steve, I just want you to know that I think of you every day because uh, when I come out of my bedroom and I go down the hall before I go down the stairs, your painting is right there, and I see it every day, and I think of you every day. Steve is an incredible artist, and uh, I had the good fortune to buy a painting from him, and um, it brings me so much joy. So, it's my well, it's actually Angie's. I bought it for her, uh, <laughs> but it, it's all joy. I, I just f wonder if um, anyone who is actually living at Earth Dance right now would like to say anything about what their experience is or, um, yeah, I, I'd love to hear w what it's like up there. Franny, do you want to say something? Or Lu uh, we, who's all there? Franny and Lucy, Sam? <laughs> um, but actually at the, the beginning of the class there was really severe lightning outside which was very disorienting that wasn't quiet <laughs> <No>. <laughs> uh, um, I mean, we're already relatively isolated so um, it's been unusual hearing from friends and family about what's happening and feeling that other layer of isolation from them, sort of virtually. Um, but being here has been really important, I think, to all of us. I mean, not to speak for everyone else, but just being occupying these spaces and knowing the history of, of Earth Dance has, you know, is, is just resonating around these spaces and, and the history of this land as well. And um, I feel like this is a time for a really deep listening, and I, I, I feel that here. It's been really, I think, beautiful. Like I love Victor the other day was saying, you know, thinking about just the stewardship of being there and how we, we take care of it, you know, even when we're having events. But right now, you know, at least for me, it's a it's a funny thing that knowing that people aren't coming and it's sort of you know this small crew of us mm. but yet f still feeling this this real gratitude um to be there and yeah and taking care of it because of the lineage and also just it feels like a really um special time to just keep focusing on bringing so much love to the space and to the land and and feeling nourished by it I just needed to unmute myself and say hi. Um, I don't know, can you hear me? I just noticed behind Jax that it was light outside and it was like 20 to six or something. I'm so confused. <laughs> we created a time warp up there. He's sitting in the kitchen to, for, the, for the potluck. <laughs> wow. It's a virtual kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So clever. <laughs> it was kind of like a like both a both a promo idea and like just a just the right amount of hokey. <laughs> Hi 
Hi, everyone. I just wanted to say thank you, Chris, and thanks, everyone. You guys make me smile, and I really enjoyed coming together and seeing so many faces of people that I love so much. So it's been really beautiful just for that in and of itself. And um, also, I'm finding myself in a new space for me. It's temporary. It's at my dad's. I just got back into the country from Argentina, and um, I found myself playing with all the objects and getting all these characters and having fun in the space. And um, I've been going deep, I've been going into meditation, but it, it has been a little more serious. So I'm glad that this gave me the opportunity to smile, connect with you guys and feel some play. I miss everybody. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you, Dana. Thanks. Um, I think I wanna take a, just maybe one, one or two more and then, um, Chris, if you want to say anything to close, and I, I just want to one more time, uh, actually right now, I'll just say that and I'll let you close it out, Chris, but I just want to say that this is an initiative that we are doing to try to stay on the map, um, to try to stay relevant, and to try to keep people connected, and to try to initiate programming in a time where we have to be very creative about how we are initiating programming. So, um, we will be continuing to do Earthlands Live on Sundays from 7 to 8 p.m. with a talk back potluck style um, for about a half hour. Um, we have teachers um, that we're really excited about that we're talking about lining up. And we would love, love, love to have all of you keep on coming back week after week. And, and furthermore, um, kind of inviting other mm. people and getting the word of mouth spread so that this can really become a hub where we see each other, where we reconvene, and where we all together get into our bodies in a, in a shared somatic experience. Um, so that's what I wanna say. Again, I'd like to just have a, maybe if anybody has anything burning that they want to say, um, please let's do that. And then Chris, feel free to close, close this, uh, this, this portion. And again, Chris, really, um, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for uh, stepping in and, and you too for continuing to show up for this, um, for this home that we both know and we both love and we both share. I, yeah, my heart is really touched tonight. Thank you. I think Aaron wants to say something. Aaron? Hi, everybody, Aaron. Um, yeah, Chris, I, again, thank you. And I think, um, one thing that I've been reflecting on was how powerful it was to start with the space inside um, before venturing into the space around us. I mean, it's such a simple thing uh, and it's a progression that makes so much sense, but I think it's something that can sometimes get lost. And uh, yeah, thank you for reminding me about that. You're welcome. Well, um, I, if anybody wants to uh, reach out to uh, Angie and I, um, you probably know how to get us, uh, but uh, I have to admit that I, uh, I've in recent uh, time checked Facebook less, uh, but now I'm checking it more because uh, um, of what's happening in the world. Uh, but um, also you can find my email if you want. It's on the Smith College website, um, caconetsmith.edu. Um, so thank you to all of you for all that you're doing to uh, take care of your loved ones, to send your attention and love out into the world to the people you can't touch and uh, see directly and uh, for your um, willingness to be the change that needs to happen to uh, reorient this world uh, in a more positive direction. And uh, when you feel, and when I feel uh, the negativity that I can get uh, to that place uh, with, all that's happening in the news uh, in the political situation to try to reel ourselves back uh, to um, again be the change be positive be uh, loving supportive and reach out to people you don't know and see if you can be uh, uh, someone who can help 
uh, rather than just critiquing and um, calling people out. So thank you all and um, I hope to see you soon. I just, um, I, I got from my technical director, Sarah Monette, I, we're gonna keep this space open for like five or 10 minutes as a silent space in case people wanna chat to each other for a little bit using this vehicle. Um, but I'm gonna just mute everybody and just let, let, that, let that carry on. Thanks again, Brando. Chris. Thank, thank you, Angie, also. Brando, I wanted to encourage you to look at the private message I sent you in the chat. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna mute myself and I'll look at the chat. Uh, I'm gonna post a, a poem in the chat, just a heads up. Okay.